Welcome to day two of Time Travel Week here on Scary Stories NYC. We're going back in time to watch long since deleted episodes from five years ago this month to see what the channel was up to back then. And when this week is over, beginning April 12th, we've got one full month of all new episodes coming up, including Dogman and Son, the Lady Werewolves of Modern Day New Orleans. I'm loyal to my werewolf husband. And my pet dogman went feral, plus literally dozens more, all being written and recorded this week. But before we advance into the future, let's journey back to the past, when we got an email from a man who claimed that he had been marked as turf by an upright walking canine. This is an allegedly true account of a person being stalked and owned by a large form predatory cryptid over a terrifyingly long period of time. And that's why we call this one 30 Years with Dogman. As told to and read by Peter Bernard. Dear Scary Stories, I am one of a growing number of people being stalked by a dogman. The stalking is not a normal hunt, it's some weird attachment, and it lasts for your entire lifetime. It is not a sign of honor, though, as the dogman does not look up to you as its leader, it looks down on you as its property and turf. It's one of the worst things that can happen to a person, and is literally the curse of the dogman. My story of being haunted by this thing began in 1988 when my parents moved out of our family home and left it to me. The very first month I was alone there, I began to feel like I was being watched. It reached the point where I set up trap cameras around the vicinity of the property so I could see if anyone was loitering around for some reason. The next day I went to check the cameras and every single one of them was missing. So I knew for sure someone was around at that point. I just figured it was a human, that's all. Then the door to the basement was broken into one night when I stayed in town with my parents. A lot of frozen meat was taken out of the freezer and thrown all around, breaking things and creating a huge mess. I had to have this guy come out and put in a new door that would be harder to get into and had a lock on it. I also hired a security guard to hang around all night so I could relax and get some sleep. The security guard quit before he got to his second week and he wouldn't even tell me why. He just said I had a bigger problem than I thought I had. I was at a loss what to do, so my parents offered to come stay the night and we could all take turns watching outside to see if we could discover what frightened off the security guard. We took turns standing guard, but the only result was we were all pretty tired and extremely cranky and headachey by breakfast time. We saw nothing out of the ordinary. Things were quiet for a while and I completely forgot about all of this. I thought maybe the prowler was as scared of the security guard as the security guard was of the prowler. Maybe it went away. Then I was awakened at night one night by loud howling in the woods outside my place. It was the strangest howl I had ever heard in my life. The animal making that sound must have been immense. I tried to go back to sleep, but the sound grew louder, and I was certain that the wolf or a dog or whatever it was must be getting closer. I got out of bed and looked out the windows, hoping to catch a glimpse of whatever it was. I looked around and looked around, but it was dark and I couldn't see very much at all. I might be looking right at the thing and not know it really. Then suddenly, bushes and trees parted dramatically and as though it were making an entrance into a movie, a huge man with a dog head walked out of the forest. I gasped and it immediately jerked its head to look directly at me. Then it screamed. I yelped and I took a step back from my window, but it was too late. The thing had seen me and already had begun running toward my house. Now, below, I could hear the monster banging on my back door, trying to get inside, snarling, scratching, and kicking. 
Idiotically, I decided this must be a dream, and I dove back into bed, pulling the covers up over my head. I guess the dogman eventually went away because I fell asleep. The next morning, I was on the phone begging my parents to let me sleep over for a night or two, or maybe a week. They told me I had to lick this thing on my own, that it was my house, not the animal's house, and so forth. I don't think they realized what I was up against. How could they? I mean, they probably thought I was imagining the entire thing. I wasn't all that sure that I wasn't. Well, my mother persuaded my father that it wouldn't hurt to let me stay there for one night, and the next morning when I got back to my place, I was horrified to see that the back door had been broken into. It was a glass, metal, and screen door, and whoever or whatever had broken in had cut itself. There was blood all over the place. These days, my first thought would be to get that blood somehow to a scientist for DNA analysis, but back then my only thought was about immediately getting a new high-security door installed. Whatever was trying to break in stopped after it cut itself, and nothing else was disturbed in the house that time, but I still felt sort of violated by the incident. I really wished I had someone else living there with me. Failing that, I started going out a lot more, dreading going home after my nights out. After a few months of socializing, I had a steady girlfriend, and we were getting more and more serious. I still had only had her out to my house during the day, and I hadn't yet explained to her why I preferred spending nights out or at her place in the city instead. It was coming time to have to explain it to her, but I couldn't think of any way to say it that didn't sound crazy. I finally relented and invited her over for dinner one night. I hadn't seen the dogman in months at that point, so maybe he was gone. Maybe there was nothing to worry about. That night, things went pretty mellow. We were having a very relaxed time, laughing at each other's jokes, and feeling a big sense of relief that here she was at my house and everything was still fine. Until, that is, she went into the bathroom, and there, staring at her through the bathroom window, was what she described as the reanimated head of a dead dog. Yeah, this was not just a hairy man from the forest with a dog's head. This was a hideously ugly, flea-bitten, smelly, diseased-looking hairy man from the forest with a dog's head. I don't remember if I made that clear before. I wanted to drive my girlfriend home, but she was too terrified to go outside until the morning. I couldn't blame her. We spent the night unable to sleep, as every half hour or so we'd be shouted at from outside by the thing, or it would run up, jump on the back door, then run away. One time we heard glass break and my girlfriend told me to go down and check on it. I refused, and she called me a coward. I couldn't really argue with her but I was still not going to go downstairs. I didn't own any weapons, really, not that I kept in my bedroom in those days at least. I was shaking and tears were running down my face, which my girlfriend reacted to with disgust. She could now see, thanks to the dog man, that I was not going to be her knight in shining armor. Once the morning light shone through the windows, she was gone, out of my life forever. That night, I drank all the beer in the house out of depression and went to bed early. Then I was awakened by the idiot dog that walks on its hind legs, howling outside my window again. That was the last straw. I ran downstairs furiously and rummaged through the kitchen for the largest knife I could find. Then out the back door I ran, screaming like a lunatic. I ran into the middle of my backyard, and I screamed ridiculously and furiously at the night. I demanded the dogman come out, show itself so we could fight. I screamed that I was going to kill it and I held the knife high. I was so angry my mouth was foaming. When I was met with silence, I laughed triumphantly and bellowed that the dogman was the cowardly one, not me. I was ready to fight, but the dogman is only interested in scaring off pretty girls. At that moment, the dogman emerged from the forest. He must have been right there watching me the entire time. I really had never realized how tall that thing was, or how wide. It really did look like a dead thing somehow walking. There was something about its eyes that were not right. They almost looked fake. Or maybe like shark eyes a little? It looked filthy, like it had pancake syrup all over it. It dawned on me that it was more likely blood than syrup, and I felt kind of sick.
The monster took a step toward me and I dropped the knife on the spot and ran. I ran back in the house. I triple locked the back door. I ran upstairs to my bedroom. I locked my bedroom door. Then I ran into my closet and I hid under my dirty laundry, ear to the floor, to hear if the creature had gotten inside. It never did. And I fell asleep in the closet, waking up with a huge pain in my neck and a worse one in my back. I went to my parents that day in person and told them I had to sell the house. I couldn't live with the dogman anymore. I was scared for my life. My father looked really concerned. He sat me down and he explained to me that what I was claiming was going on just was not possible. He said I had a prowler break in once and I had been imagining the rest since then. If the dogman was real, why had it never come by the house until he and mom moved out? Why had they never seen it? Why was I the only one to see it? I told him about my girlfriend who had seen it, and they laughed. They not only didn't believe I was haunted by a dogman, they didn't even believe I once had a girlfriend. This was the beginning of a long downward spiral for me. I pretty much lost all self-esteem, and I lived with the dogman occasionally breaking in, trashing my refrigerator. I couldn't have pets, I couldn't have girlfriends, and I went a bit crazy. About 10 years ago, my mother passed, and about 7 years ago, my dad joined her. It took me a few years of living there in the house alone, with the unending torment of the dogman almost every night, to realize that I didn't want to live that way any longer. One especially violent night when the creature tore up the entire downstairs of my place, I calmly walked out my bedroom window, shimmied down the drain on the side of the house, and just walked into my car, got in, drove off to a motel while the monster kept raging and destroying everything inside. I was free of the thing. I sold my house and property dirt cheap and I bought a tiny home of my own out in the country over 100 miles away from the Dogman House. That's what I had come to think of it as, the Dogman House. Not the house of my childhood, not the home I grew up in, not something to pass down to the next generation. I was going to be the last generation of my family thanks to the Dogman. He had taken my home from me, my heritage, the memories of my childhood and family. And he could have them. I just wanted a chance for a new present and a new future. I was so happy in my new home. I got a dog, and I built him a doghouse with my own two hands. I had even started going into the city and socializing a bit again, although not as fervently as when I was younger. Then one night last year, I came home from a club, and my dog was gone. He was not in his doghouse, and his chain had been snapped. There was no way he could have done that himself. It was too strong a chain for him. I spent days searching the woods behind the house for him, but I never found anything. I didn't want to get a new dog until I knew what happened to the last one. I wanted to make sure the next one would be safe, but safe from what? I had no idea. And then, it came back. The howling waking me up in the middle of the night. The howling came back. Once again, I was right back to being a nervous wreck. Even when the howling didn't come at night, I couldn't sleep anyway. I was afraid it might come. Was this what or who I thought it was? Had he found me? Or was this just a random pack of coyotes out there? I decided I was being ridiculous, and I got myself some sleeping pills. The first night I took the sleeping pills, I was awakened by a crashing sound downstairs. I got out of bed, and my legs gave out. I wasn't really awake due to the sleeping medication, so I was sort of panicked with my heart racing and at the same time incredibly groggy and unable to clear my vision or gain my balance. I eventually gave up trying to walk and I crawled out of my bedroom to look down the stairs and see what was making the racket. When I looked downstairs, I started laughing. I, started laughing. I saw something so funny. It was just hilarious. I rolled on the floor laughing. What else could I do? I couldn't stand up. I laughed so hard because you know what was downstairs? That same dog man. The dead looking, blood covered, reanimated corpse of a dog man 
The dog man who took my girlfriend away, my dog, the dog man who ruined my life. He was downstairs throwing a lamp into my TV set. He looked the same as he had before, except now there were big patches of fur missing from his back and the exposed skin looked unhealthy. I'm not sure what to call it other than that. There were pimples of various sizes and colors and the skin reminded me of chicken's feet in its texture. It folded all over the place, but not the way it looked like it should fold. I could see a chunk was missing from one of the animal's ears and that one of its eyes was bloodshot. This thing had seen better days. It looked like the only thing keeping it going was sheer anger and hatred that it apparently traveled 100 miles just to deliver to me personally. If there could be a living embodiment of pointless fury, this thing is that. In fact, pointless is a good word for this thing. It pointlessly invaded my life, home, property, pointlessly kicked me off my own family's land, then pointlessly trailed me 100 miles to pointlessly wreck my life all over again. This was the personification of the lose-lose scenario. When this dogman is in the picture, everybody loses. But on this night, I couldn't be upset about it any longer. I couldn't be angry. I could only laugh. And laugh and laugh and laugh. I'm pretty sure I had kind of lost my mind there. I guess the dogman must have heard me laughing because the next thing I knew, I was looking directly up from the floor at this thing. Its drool fell from its mouth and landed on my forehead. I couldn't just hear the thing growling, I could feel it growling. Then the strangest sensation took over my body and I didn't understand what was happening to me. It felt like I was flying, but how could that be happening? Colors and shapes blurred past me, but none of them made any sense. Then pain so heinous I don't want to remember it took over and a white light grew large in front of me and that's the last thing I remember until I woke up the next morning, bruised and bloodied, laying on the floor in the middle of my utterly trashed new house. I tried to get up and I found that was more difficult than I would have imagined. I was unable to get to my car and drive myself to the hospital. I couldn't find my cell phone anywhere. I found the landline and fortunately it wasn't completely out of charge so I got a call out to 911 and passed out again. I woke up in the ambulance crying. I knew I had to move again and I had to find a place the dogman could never possibly go. And so, these days, I live in one of the larger cities in New Jersey. I had to go back to work as my inheritance was used up with all this drama and hospital time. I work as a security guard on the Jersey Shore. It's not the worst job. Other guys tell me they find going on patrol terrifying. You never know if you're going to meet a thief, a murderer, a junkie, you never know. I laugh at the other guys when they say stuff like that. I don't care if I run into any of those kinds of people. They're just people. All I care about is that when I go out on patrol, there is absolutely no chance that I will run into that same insane dog man again. That same lunatic, monster, dead looking, smelly, possessive jerk of a dog man who thinks he owns me. Whether you're a Luddite or a techie, you gotta give respect to Becky. Please join us in welcoming our newest top tier channel member, Becky Lewis, to the fold. Thank you so much for joining, Becky. We're very glad to have you with us. Becky gets to see our secret uncensored stories each Sunday. Plus, our over 25 hours of secret uncensored archives. And I guess we should make another installment of that soon to add to it. Starting in a couple of days, Becky will also be getting to see all our upcoming episodes well ahead of the general public. If you would like to have as many superpowers as the wonderful Becky Lewis, then check out what our international TV spokesmongrel Henry Lee Dogman has to say. Hank! Thanks, Biggie. And thanks to all of you for watching this far. If you liked it, please click like. If you'd like to see more of our work, please subscribe. And also click that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we put out a new episode. To become an executive producer, you can donate to us through the thanks button under each of our videos or through our paypal.me slash peterbernard209 page. To receive cool perks like secret uncensored Dogman episodes far too wild to ever run on this channel, you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button or join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. 
Joining either at the $3 a month level or above gets you access to our over 25 hours of secret uncensored Dogman stories available nowhere else. Do you have a scary story about Dogman or some other kind of high strangeness that happened to you? Let us know by emailing us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or by leaving us a voicemail message at 804 Lascary. You may need to call back on that when it cuts off after, I think, three minutes. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff, thank you for simply watching to the end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Come back, come back, come back for more scary, scary stories. stories.